Hey, welcome, 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 my friends. Here we are. It is the 30th of December here in New Zealand, uh, 2020 still, just for a couple of days. It's Chat with Matt. Uh, hopefully I'm in the Bright Light Client. No, hopefully I'm in the Bright Light Beings group. <laughs> bright Light Beings, how are you doing? Uh, I'm looking a little bit low in the frame, a little bit high in the frame, all the way around. Popping out the top of the frame now, I've gone too much. Um... Yeah, how are you? We're here to answer any questions, talk to any requests. Uh, roughly spend half an hour, but it's normally closer to 40 minutes. Uh, shooting the breeze and um, facilitating transformation, basically. I'm not so here, much here to deliver concise intellectual information. Uh, I'm not an oracle. I'm here to stimulate transformation. So uh, I don't care about the truth. <laughs> I put it out there blatantly. I don't care about the truth. Mantara spirit doesn't care about the truth. Not we care about the truth with a capital T, right? That we're all one. Uh, but but you know whether facts, you know facts and fiction. It, it's a blurry line. So but uh, because what's true for someone's not true for someone else, right? Uh, what I find, you know, I could say it's cold. That's true for me, but it might not be true for you because you might have been brought up in you know somewhere that is seriously cold and for you it's hot here um so good morning carolyn so the point is the point is we're not here to tell you what's what's true we're not here to tell you what to believe we're not here to give you information that's going to save you or anything like that because information doesn't do that um intent does that actions aligned with your intent is what will uh allow you to be happy not information information is worthless on its own so, but saying that, we will answer any questions as best and as candidly as we can with an intent to stimulate transformation rather than to tell you what's right or wrong. So if you've got some of those questions or uh, requests to speak on a topic, then you can pipe up. Very happy for that to occur. Um, I actually have written in here quite a few to start with. Uh, so let's start. Um, Judith asked... <clears throat> and I read this last night before I went to bed and I was almost, uh, <laughs> I'm still not sure if I'm going to answer this. Uh, how are we going to answer this? <sighs> Distracting myself with a drink. Here we go. What is the most profound thing, only one in brackets, you personally have learnt on your spiritual path? So I think the most profound thing that I have learned, and by profound, I'm going to um, use, I'm going to translate profound as the most useful, um, as opposed to the most awe-inspiring or fantastical, which you might say is profound. But the most profound thing, the most thing, the thing that has delivered me the most results on my spiritual path is, wait for it, hey Sister Jane, relax. I know, one word, right? Relax. I started my spiritual journey very, very intent and serious on reaching whatever we want to call that word, right? Nirvana, moksha, self-realization, ascension. Uh, I started back when I was 25, so it's 25 years ago, through the yoga path, Took you know mantra with a with a traditional Indian guru had a mantra around my neck right did religious spiritual practices you know our meditation in the morning our meditation at night every day without fail um, did my mantra you know during the day um, was very very disciplined and intent dedicated, devoted to my spiritual practice, which is great. And it has served me well, that discipline, dedication, devotion has been very, very good. But the other thing that I was, was I was fucking serious. I was very, very serious. It was very important. Getting it right was very important. And I was reading a lot, reading a lot of the scriptures, reading a lot of, you know, any lecture that Swamiji had done trying to make sure I didn't miss out on something, trying to make sure that I didn't uh, get it wrong. No worries, Barbara, it will be here for you when you are ready. The replay is as good as gold. Um, with all of that seriousness came a contraction and a stress that held me back. I was in that state for 16, 17 years, right? Uh, I still progressed. I still 
built a foundation, um, but it wasn't easy, it wasn't comfortable, it wasn't joyful. And what I, when I found, when I gave myself space, when all of that crumbled, which it inevitably does because it's like a volcano because of all of the stress and all of the contraction and all of the importance of getting it right, when all of that blew the top out and, and it all came to an end, and I wondered if I just wasted 16 years of my life or 17 years of my life, and I had to come back to a new foundation of what spirituality was, the words that just keep resonating in my head was relax. This is not so important. You know, let it go. Let it go. Stop trying so hard. Yeah, meditate, but don't meditate with with stress to, to get it right. You know, don't don't make it so important that your meditation must come first before everything else. Because you've got a family, you've got a job, you've got a partner, you've got you've got your body, your health, everything, right? And so relax, relax. You can't get this wrong. We are here to be an expression of ourself. That is the realization. The realization is not some internal energetic experience that you achieve by freaking aligning your chakras and getting all of the mantras right. It's just not in my opinion. Of course, this is my opinion through my experience. So that's the most profound thing I think I've learned on the spiritual path is to relax, not take it so seriously. Be dedicated by all means, but let go of the stress. Allow yourself to enjoy the process. Relax and enjoy was my catch cry for a, a long time through those years of first uh you know, finding that space and choosing to become a healer or a facilitator, even before I started speaking light language, right? Um, the words, the first words that came out of my mouth in terms of guidance to others through that time was relax and enjoy. This is an experience to be had, not an experience to get right. You know, this is this path is not something that we need to get right. It's something we need to enjoy. It's through the process of enjoyment that we actually evolve. Hopefully that worked for you, Judith. Uh, next question, Sister Jen. This is quite common, I think. So people in my community have started an Excel, uh, that's a spreadsheet, I believe, to track, quote unquote, how many people members have been around each week. One column to indicate the number of people and one column to indicate the number of people in community. Uh, their reason is that several people in the community have immune disorders and are at high risk and want to be more informed about their level of risk and decide who to interact with. Everyone seems to be on board except one person who refuses to be part of anything and does her own thing completely. I find myself a bit repulsed by all sides and notice that and notice the, I think there's old, the old pattern of wanting to totally disengage from everyone come up. I feel tired of trying to have compassion for people and understand them. Yeah, so this is pretty common, Jen, in my opinion, in my experience too. Uh, what's really common right now is feeling tired. <laughs> Feeling tired of trying. I just had this conversation this morning with Marie. I'm just tired of trying to get it right. So I'm coming back to that point again, right? Because we've got some things going on around us and I'm noticing the pressure build up in my own life. So this tired of trying to um, get it right and to meet obligations and to please everyone and to please expectations of who you should be. Um, and that includes being compassionate and understanding people like, oh, freak, I can't understand myself. I don't know. You know, I'm not definitely trying not to set the bar that I should understand others because that's just ridiculous. So if you're tired of trying to understand people, then let that go. You can hold compassion for people without understanding their motives. Right. And I know that that's a little bit foreign for our mind because our mind likes to un think that to to uh, be compassionate for people, uh, you kind of have to understand why they're doing things. Uh, we like to, we think that everything in life is somehow some intellectual pursuit. This is very common, especially for some of us. Some of us not so much, but I don't know, I am of that ilk, uh, you know, hence, you know, honours degree in mechanical engineering and stuff like that, that, you know, understanding is the pathway to success and happiness and right. So we think 
to be compassionate. Like this is very common with forgiveness. People think, well, if I'm going to find forgiveness, then I need to understand why they did that and then reconcile that and then make it okay. That's not forgiveness. <laughs> forgiveness is a beautiful vibration of love that just sort of ripples through the space and lets go of all of that needing to understand, needing to reconcile, need, and you just basically give everything its freedom. Compassion is very similar. You don't need to understand why someone's doing something in order to be compassionate for them, right? But you know, ultimately, compassion is just a state of allowance where you can love someone and maintain allowance that they're acting from their own for their own reasons, basically, for, for based on their own history, based on their own coping mechanisms, based on their own pain points. We can have compassion that people are doing things that might be discordant to our way of viewing the world, but we understand that they're doing it based on their history and whatever's shaped them. So we're compassionate and we understand that they're probably in pain of some degree, whether they know it or not, right? Abusive people are trying to escape their own pain. That's why they're abusive. That's why they, their ego is looking to find okayness about them and they abuse others to try and do that. It's a very unsocial way of doing things. It's very counter to those of us who are very aligned with the light and want to be kind and generous and nurturing and caring for people in our community as a way of us coping with not feeling good enough. Other people who are not feeling good enough decide to be abusive and obnoxious and controlling of others in community because that's how they're coping with not feeling good enough. Understanding that it's the basically the same disconnection from the being that we be that's driving all sorts of behaviors allows us to be compassionate for people, right? And that doesn't mean we allow them to walk over us. It doesn't mean just because we're compassionate with understanding why an abuser is the way that they are that we allow them to keep abusing. Um, but we don't make them fundamentally wrong for the behavior that they're choosing. We're compassionate in understanding that they've just chosen or just been educated into a coping mechanism, right? Their history has educated them that perhaps this is the way that their parents behave towards them. It's the only way they know of dealing with the pain that they're feeling, right? So when you look at a group of people trying to interact in a stressful situation, which is what you're talking about, right? Where people are very fearful for their own for their own well-being and are now trying to do things. Other people are fearful, like this person who is choosing not to comply is fearful for their own well-being and don't want to lose themselves in having to comply with other people's, you know, fears. And so they're fearful of having to, right? So it's fear upon fear and you're and you're tired of it. You're tired of living in a world where fear is dictating how people behave. Fear is the underlying motivation behind both those actions, right? Both the people who want us Excel spreadsheet to track this and that and that. It's all fear, right? And the person who doesn't want to interact with that, that's fear as well. So uh, as a being who's aligned with the light and love, right, you, you're tired of that and it's hard to find compassion, but compassion is going to serve you and at the same time, you know, you're allowed to step out of it, Jen. You're allowed to maintain neutrality and just go, well, <laughs> right? Because I know that this is catch cry that we're supposed to engage at this time and we're supposed to speak out. But really, that is, um, in my opinion, a, a level of control as well. You know, this whole slogan that I picked up very much on and spoke out against when it came out, you know, with the... Uh, Black Lives Matters movement, which is silence is violence slogan, right? Which is very much a catch cry of, you know, the the shadow masculine, right? Wanting people to engage, desperate for people to fight with each other um, and saying that if you opt out of the discussion, if you don't engage, then you're actually on the wrong side, right? Your silence basically is condoning um, racism, which was is completely not true, right? Uh, if you need to speak out and say that racism is wrong, and if you need to judge others for being racist, then you, you know you're basically racist. <laughs> it's it's because what we fight against is what we feed. So, um, hey, good morning, Christine. So you know there is. It's a very very slippery slope, and it's very easy to get caught up in fighting which is what the shadow controlling masculine wants us to do. They want us to engage with each other with, with disharmony. Um, 
So they're inciting that and they're inciting people to must, you must have an opinion on this and you must write, to pick a side. You have to pick a side. If you don't pick a side, you're wrong at the moment. And that is just totally anti evolutionary and spiritual. You don't need to pick a side. Your side is you. You need to stand for your um, joy and your light and your integrity, your integrity. That's all that matters. Picking fights and, and picking sides. and tr So it's difficult. And it's very, very common to feel tired right now. And trust that that tiredness is what we are releasing. Um, there's a lot of that energy up right now of what we are releasing. Uh, what we're feeling is what we're releasing. And there's a lot of density. And it feels like tiredness. I've been incredibly, incredibly tired lately. Um, ridiculously so. But I recognize that we're right in this portal. It's full moon in, uh, well, it's nine, I don't know. Eight hours, say. I'll say eight hours. I think it might only be seven. But so we're right in the lead up to a full moon and it's intense. It's intense. And what's really intense is what we're releasing and it's coming up now. And there's a lot of tiredness and frustration and bordering on anger uh, with ourselves or even with God right now that this is such a shit fight and it's so hard. And what's the point of being here? I've talked to quite a few people, you know, very, very beautiful, intentional people who, who are very, have dedicated years and years and years of their life to either being a facilitator or working in, 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 in caring for others. And right now they're just going, what's the point? It seems like everything that I've done, all the work that I've done in myself is for nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm worse off than I've ever been. I'm feeling more terrible, more disconnected, more like a failure than ever before. That is what's up right now, and it is not a bad thing. So allowance and acceptance that what you are feeling is what you are releasing. And while it's frustrating that you've worked on some of these topics for a long time, right? I've worked on my self-worth and my not good enough for a long time. I've, I've recognized that and been trying to overcome that, trying to overcome that. And yet it seems worse than ever right now, right today. That's not a bad thing. That doesn't mean that all of the work I've done for the last decade or so has been wasted. It's, um, it's the, is, are we going through the next step? We're taking this to the next level. So be okay. Sister Deb said, I spent most of yesterday in bed so tired, even with sleeping well at night. Yeah, so it, it's, it's normal. It's normal. Hey, Brother Doug. Hey, Sister Christine. Ah, Christina. Um, so hopefully that answered that, Jen. Um, be an allowance. Um, give yourself space. Don't get drawn into needing to engage. Uh, compassion is just love. Allow yourself to love the fact that people are going through a hard time right now. <laughs> it's going to serve them. Everything is going to serve them. Um, Denise. If someone dies and for whatever reason decides not to go into the light stays in the earth realm, would that basically be a splinter of the soul and needed to be integrated through soul retrieval? Uh, not necessarily. Um, although there could be, you know, the soul could splinter because if the soul stays intact in wanting to stay here, uh, because it is, a, it can be a, a It would be unlikely to leave a whole persona behind. You've got me questioning this now in my own mind. Okay, I'm going to come back to first principles. How does it serve us? Um, how does this understanding serve us? It could be. It could be that... Um, in, a, in an exceptional experience that you basically leave the whole of that persona behind from a previous lifetime where you chose, where this personality stayed. It's unlikely. It's unlikely. What we call soul splinters is usually, um, is usually just fragments of energy that are left behind in experiences that can't be processed. 
uh, choosing not to move on, choosing to, to uh, you know, out of fear, because that's basically why souls or, or beings, because uh, it's more than just the soul, right? There's an element of the personality, there's a big element of the personality that's very much still engaged when, when the body drops to the ground. Um, there's a lot of personality, it's not just the soul that moves on, right? So, um, and then slowly that's weeded away and put into segments and, and it, it's there then for, um, you know, there's a process, a transformation or transitional process that happens after the physical body dies where things are reconciled to a point and stored away to be processed again when there's a body available to process it through. Hence, we come back into the world, we incarnate and then over the next however long, I might think it's 42 years or maybe even 49 years, we're uploading various parcels of energy that we haven't processed yet. Anywho, the, the point being that um, splinters generally are just fragments of energy from harsh experiences that couldn't be processed. They could be a death experience, by the way, which can cause rather large splinters that need to be integrated lately, later, um, and, and we're going through a lot of that integration right now with various things coming up that we couldn't process at the time, various pain points, various, you know, traumas coming up. Um, you know, soul retrieval is not the only way, right? So we, soul retrieval is not a necessary process. If soul retrieval is one methodology of bringing fragments of energy back into integration. Um, but, you know, it's happening. That, that same integration is happening through various other methods, including sleep and dreams. Um, it is a natural process. It can be speeded up and helped with a, a skilled practitioner who works in, a, in an empowering way. Um, and But, you know, like all methodologies, there are people out there who don't really know what they're doing and some people who do soul retrievals make a bigger mess than they actually uh, serve. I've, you know, I've helped people untangle some of the stuff that they've come up with and some of the narratives that have been built out of, you know, the attempts of soul retrieval type experiences. I don't know if I'm helping Denise, but basically I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, Ultimately, I think what I was about to say is, you know, it's fear that prevents people from moving on. Uh, hey, Brother Lou. Um, and they will stay engaged with the Earth experience and not wanting to go through their uh, transitional process of, of stripping away a lot of the personality and allowing the soul to have some, you know, uh, ascend basically in the, into a realm off planet for some time before you know, reincarnation is chosen into whatever dimension that might happen. Um, you know, people are scared. People are scared of being judged after they die because they've been indoctrinated with this belief that God is a judgmental God and they will be judged. So they hang around. They Some of them even deny or, you know, can't process the fact that they're dead. Uh, they don't want to admit that they're dead. Um, because they're scared of being dead, so they don't want to. They don't want that, and so they hang around pretending that they're alive, but they don't have a body. Right? This is, you know, not super uncommon. Um, we call them ghosts or spirits or entities. Um, that's not necessarily what we would call uh, a soul retrieval. And I'm not sure that the soul would leave a whole personality like that and then move into another incarnation. Um, I could be wrong there, maybe in certain circumstances it would be, and it would be a bit more than a splinter that needs to be retrieved if it was a whole lifetime. Anyway, other people might have different different opinions on that. I tend to work, you know, non-intellectually with this stuff and create spaces where anything that needs to happen, happens, and that the higher self guides the process, so I don't need to be too... Uh, concerned with such information because basically uh, my mind really is not capable of doing a good job of that. Um, and if I was to start dabbling and thinking I understood how all of this worked and facilitating people's transformational process from this understanding that I understand, from a belief that I understand that I'm going to fix you because I'm going to uh, employ or project my 
beliefs on you and, and do things in your energetic field with my willpower based on a, a belief that I understand how it quote unquote should be, then I think that's very dangerous. Uh, and I personally just do not go there. Do not go there. Um, I, I create spaces and trust God to do the work uh, or what we, I call higher self, but it's basically, you know, the aspect of the divine that you are. Uh, so all of that retrieval work happens without me having to understand what needs to happen. Um, and that's very much safer in my opinion. So, and next question. If anyone else has something they want to say, uh, or, or cancel, um, then please just reach out. Christine wrote back before, really wise words, thank you. I did that with my sister. We are on opposite viewpoints of the COVID debate, but when I... But when I saw my sister, I just hugged her and kept hugging her until until her tears came. I similarly accepted her as she was, and our relationship has totally changed. Awesome story, Christina. I love that. Um, hey, brother Phil. So yeah, exactly. Love cures all. And at the moment, these divisions are just fueled by fear. Um, might be off topic, but right. Well, brother Lou writes in what's off topic. I don't think there is a topic, but I'm going to quickly get into Carolyn so that I don't leave that out. Carolyn wrote, I'm feeling blah, not a lot of enthusiasm, feeling achy all over and very painful left knee. So I want to believe we're moving into an amazing new world, but I'm struggling. Thank you for your ongoing support and wisdom. Awesome. I think I've talked a little bit about that. Um, but yes, we are moving into an awesome world. And what we're experiencing right now is what we're releasing. So let go of the struggle to believe that if we're moving into an awesome new world, that it should be getting better incrementally because these things do not happen in a linear fashion. It's basically going to get worse before it gets better. And it's not linear. It's multidimensional. It's all happening at once. New awesome things are beginning right now while incredibly painful things are ending right now. And both things can happen concurrently. And we get this stage where we start switching between realities and so don't get caught up in thinking, well, if we're entering a new world, then everything should be getting better. And it really, it feels like my experience of it, everything's getting worse. So, so something's gone wrong. Let go of the idea that something's going wrong and trust that these endings are rather intense now, while very exciting things are beginning right now. And where you focus your energy on is kind of more of the experience that you are having in saying that, even with your attention focused on what we're stepping into, you are also having intense uh, expulsions of vibrations that you cannot take forward. And they can be rather consuming, rather consuming, as I can definitely bear testament to. Over the last few days, I've had some very, very intensely uncomfortable experiences, uh, emotionally, mentally, and physically, and externally, right, just in mess around me and stuff arising and other people interacting in the same energy of incre incredibly intense discomfort as their stuff is getting purged in this very potent time of transformation. So hopefully that helps, Sister uh, Carolyn. Hopefully that helps. Just managing my things. Okay, I'm running out of time. Is brother, uh, did you get that written, brother Lou? And I just didn't see it. I'll do a refresh on this page. And hopefully I'll be able to see where this is going. Uh, click on here again. Written, brother Lou, and I just didn't see it. I'll do a refresh on this page. I need to double click on it. Here we go. I'm going to make that silent. And now I should be able to scroll through all the comments. Awesome. I think we're doing well. Is it coming, Brother Lou? Brother Lewis, are you writing something good? I don't want to leave you hanging now that you said that it might be off topic. That's got me very excited because there is no topic. So I'm doing another call. 
well, I can, I can say that while we're waiting. I'm doing another call at 4 p.m. New Zealand time, so it's 9.30 now. Uh, so that's in six and a half hours. In six and a half hours, we'll be on again. I know that's not really great for um, the the UK and Europe because it's like 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning, but it's when the friggin' full moon is actually full. So that's when we're going to do it. Um, No, I don't have a ritual, Christina. <laughs> I'll probably be asleep. <laughs> uh, I, I don't put a lot of credence on the exact moment of New Year's Eve. Um, I know there's, you know, you could, um, you could align with the morphogenetic field of New Year's Eve, but it's the moment of New Year's Eve. And of course, it's different all around the world. So I'd only be connecting with the people in New Zealand because obviously we have New Year's Eve before anyone else, pretty much. Um... The energy of actually New Year's Eve is not a great one. <laughs> it's full of hope, hopeism, um, hopium. You know, everyone hopes that the New Year is going to be well, but it's kind of this drunken friggin' rabble, isn't it? Really, New Year's Eve for for most. So it's not a particularly spiritual moment for me. Um, so I don't get too caught up. You can use it if you like in in doing a ritual and and setting yourself up to you know putting your intentions you know more firmly for how you're moving forward into the new year. But I've been doing that over the last few weeks anyway. As this year's wrapping up, I'm you know reflecting on how this year has been and you know getting a little bit more clear on really what's important to me, what values I'm taking forward into. The new year. I usually choose two words, and I haven't really settled on those yet. What what words are really going to uh, drive me through this uh, 2021? What what values I really feel. Um, the interesting thing is, I'm finding less and less desire to make choices for the future. Like even choosing what my intent is for the whole year of 2021. I think if anything we learned in 2020, it's that we need to be adjustable, adaptable and accommodating. And it's no point getting too set on making plans for what you're going to achieve this year when we really don't know how this year is going to pan out. And I think that's become, I think that's become more and more obvious, but it's always been the truth, right? It's always been the truth that it's a rather... Uh, immature way of looking at the world, these setting goals into the future. Goals are great, but we also need to be very much more um, adaptable. Yeah, hopeism, Hope, hopeism, uh, or hope, hopioids, <laughs> the hopioids. Um, right, I just missed a whole bunch of calls. So yeah, I don't particularly use New Year's as a, as a strong uh, opportunity, but you know, I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just that's that's me. Shirley wrote, Hi, Matt. I'm struggling with grief and broken heart. My only sister passed away on Christmas Day. Oh, wow. Suddenly, suddenly, any help is appreciated. Okay. Okay, Shirley. So, first of all, it's to remember that the grief is entirely appropriate and okay and also not set in stone so allow yourself to feel what you're feeling let go of the struggle so you're not struggling with grief allow grief right you don't need to suppress it you don't need to overcome it it doesn't need to be a certain way allow yourself to be overwhelmed this is an overwhelming experience overwhelm is not a wrongness allow yourself to be non-functional in the emotional experience that you're having, right? The the energy conditions are already incredibly intense. To have such an um, big experience, such an intense experience in an already uh, intense environment is very, very challenging. So allow yourself to be very, very challenged. And don't struggle against it. Allow yourself to surrender to the experience and allow it to ripple through you. Of course, you, you know, um, 
you have to function to a level, right, to keep feeding yourself and, and looking after the things that need to be done. But don't set your expectations too high about what you're supposed to be achieving right now and allow yourself to process the experience that's right in front of you. Um, trust that your heart isn't broken, even though, you know, because you can't break a heart. Right, hearts don't break. They're an energetic structure that is incredibly resilient. So there's nothing broken there. Allow yourself to feel that pain without implying a narrative that something's broken and that it needs to be fixed. Nothing needs to be fixed. Your heart won't need to be healed or mended or fixed. All you need to do is accept that the pain that you are feeling and the grief and the loss that you are feeling is normal and natural, and it will be with you for a very, very long time. And that's okay. You will learn to relax through that experience. You will learn to find ways of functioning despite the fact that you've had this experience. Give yourself time right now and don't project into the future of, of what you need to do to get yourself back on track. Let go of on track and allow yourself to be in this moment right now and allow yourself to fully experience this moment for the value that it contains. I know it's hard to see that there's value in experience, such a deep sense of grief and loss, but there is. There is. It's a very, very life-changing experience an intense experience, but a very formative experience. Going into the depths of these pains, experiencing, allowing yourself to experience the depth of loss is a very, very valuable experience for the human and for the soul. So allow yourself to go there and allow yourself to experience it. And I know that you think your your personality might think you're going to lose yourself in that pain, that it's going to overwhelm you and you're going to dissolve or just die in it. But it's not the truth. It's not the truth. And when you come, when you basically lose your fear of the pain by having experienced it in such intensity and still kept breathing and still being here, then you gain a level of confidence to work in this world, right? Once you've lost something so dear to you and experienced such a deep level of pain and, and survived, you have a new level of confidence that you can move forward in a more empowered way into other experiences without the fear of losing something because you've already experienced great loss and moved through it. So... <clears throat> So be an allowance of that process, Shirley, and definitely we're uh, all holding our uh, intent to support you through this experience. So relax into being open to receive the support that's pouring out from for you from various forms in community, including spirit, many, many beings of light and love around you right now. So be willing to accept that support and that help. And as I keep saying, just surrender into the experience in the moments. Let go of any plans in your head about how long you should grieve or what you should do or this or that. And just move through your life at the moment, one moment at a time. Okay, Brother Lewis said, my experience with my dead son spirit is that he just transitioned into whoop, that he just transitioned into another plane as per my wife's vision it's the most beautiful place so there is life after we leave here oh most definitely definitely brother lou um was that the thing that was off topic uh but it's definitely not off topic as, as you've seen. Um, so yes, there is definitely there's definitely life after we leave here and transitioning through, it's a process, right? And there's definitely different levels and different experiences that we have after, after this physical body drops to the ground. This physical body, this experience in physicality, just looking at the time, I've got another call very soon, um, is a, is a very valid and very awesome experience, but it's not the only one, right? By any stretch of the imagination, we are vast multidimensional beings and there is an infinite number of dimensions to have experiences on, some of which are more physical like this one and some of them are more etheric. Um, and so, you know, 
all of us as souls and as per, per, personalities as well, we go on and experience in many, many, many other ways. And with that knowledge, you can take the the seriousness. This is where I started this conversation, right? When I was asked what was the most profound thing I've learned on this on my own spiritual journey, and it's to relax and to let go of the seriousness of trying to get it right, because this realm is just a blip, just a grain of sand in, in on the beach of existence. So don't get too contracted around trying to get this right. Uh, you can't get it wrong. Enjoy it for what it is. Let go of the seriousness of this earth life. I know the ego is clinging to life and wants success and all of all of what we've been programmed with, but if you can if you can clear through that and just really enjoy this world for what it is, a moment-to-moment -moment experience that allows us to express ourselves in expansive ways, allows us to play with physical objects and to, you know, be a little bit removed from our connection and our understanding of, you know, we, we're having a, an experience and it's valid for what it is. So uh, enjoy this experience for what it is and don't get too concerned uh, with trying to avoid death or with trying to get it right, or trying to be successful so that you don't need to come back. I talk to a lot of people say, I've got to get it right, I definitely don't want to come back to Earth. It's just not, and I was there, I was there, I was there for so long, right? Definitely, 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 this is my last lifetime, I'm not coming back. That level of stress just doesn't help. You might have an awareness that this is your last life, last life and I'm not saying that that is wrong at all, um, but don't, don't get contracted around needing to ensure that this is your last life here on earth. Don't get too bogged down in trying to avoid um, having to come back by getting it right this time, completing all of your karma. And all of that stuff is just too stress inducing to actually achieve what you want to achieve. <laughs> You're going to achieve your enlightenment much, 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 much more effectively if you relax into the moments and trust. You don't need to stay alive. You don't. You just don't need to stay alive. We don't need to save humanity. We don't even need to save the earth. Many of us have purpose around that and feel very purposeful in working for the environment or working for community or working for society or working for our family um, or working for ourselves and having an awesome life, but opulence. Uh, but ultimately, all of it, all of it doesn't really matter. You will go on, you will go on, and we can't really fail in that. We are aspects of God's source universe, having an experience of God's source universe. This little earth experience is just a blip, just a blip in the whole thing. And I'm not saying that so that you, you know, act in an irresponsible way and just take resources and da 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 da. That's not who we are. Your intent to be the being is all that matters and allow yourself to relax into that. Don't get too caught up in, in, in this stress of trying to fix things and get things right and then fight against things that you think oppose your point of view. Just stop it. <laughs> stop fighting. Stop being so stressed. Relax, relax, relax. Okay. I am finishing up. Awesome, Christina. Um, Shirley wrote, thank you so much, Matt. I have been listening to your light language replays and it helped me to sleep. Awesome. Glad you're getting some sleep, Shirley, because it is really important while you process. It is really important while you process. So, uh, yeah. Okay, friends, I will get off this uh, 45 minutes into our half hour call. Much, much love to you. As I said, I'll be back uh, for a call um, with the new moon, uh, new moon, full moon. We are really uh, welcoming in change now as, as the new year comes to an end. This is an awesome time and I've forgotten. I have written some notes from the astrology that I read. Uh, I think Uranus, Uranus, how you say so, so that planet has a, a an aspect that is, you know, helping us do something which I've forgotten. But basically the guts of it is, it's an awesome time to release stuff, to heal stuff, to heal some inner child stuff or some, um, you know, splinters of soul, if you want to call it that. Uh, is This is an awesome time for, for healing and integration uh, so that we can welcome in change. Because our resistance to change generally is, is fear, right? It's fear. We have fear inside of us, and that means we want to control our external world, so we don't want things to change, 
right? Or we, or we want to control how it changes. Welcoming change means to relax into allowing things to change. And that is where we're really at, right? These are new beginnings, old endings, it's change happening. So this call, I know it's, it's kind of repetitive. I, it, I, I swore blind three or four days ago, you know, through Christmas period, just after the, the 21st call for the conjunction that I wasn't going to do a call for this new uh, full moon because I, I'm, I'm feeling so freaking tired. And, and I thought everyone else will be over it. I've done, you know, this will be the fourth of these basically free extended light language calls that I've done in a month. Um, and so there's no need, there's no need, there's no need, I was telling me, but um, the night before last, I basically had my arm twisted up behind my back by spirit. And so we're here, <laughs> we're here, we're gonna be doing it. So um, I'm in service, uh, first of all, and it is my greatest joy. So I just have to let go of my egoic beliefs around what should be done and shouldn't be done. Anyway, so the call will be on, it's uh, in six hours time or thereabouts starting. Yeah, starting in, in just over six hours. Uh, in welcoming in change. So if you can make that, great. If you want to listen to the replay, great. Uh, the the stuff is in this group. It's also been sent out via email. Um, if you can't find it, sing out and I'll post it again. Um, so that's happening. Anyway, much love uh, letting go of this year and I'll speak to you next year on Chat with Matt next Wednesday. Much, much love. Bye for now. Namaste.